What is up, people? Today, we're diving into all of those details in the latest live stream, scrapping that 60-second format that I've been doing because, well, it's really hard to take out some of the fun details that I can't fit in 60 seconds, and not a lot of you really watched it anyways, and the YouTube algorithm hates it. So we're going back to a traditional breakdown, but I gotta say, 2022 has been quite the year for Intrepid. And even though we don't have Alpha 2 yet, month after month, they keep tending to impress us and topping the live stream that came before. And we still haven't even seen a fraction of what Alpha 2 and Launch will have to offer. But before we jump into this breakdown, though, let me just remind you that 84% of you watching all of this great Ashes of Creation content still aren't subscribed. And I can even see that a lot of you continue to return for more videos. So let's lower that number and hit that subscribe button. This live stream kicks off like all live streams, talking about how the content creator isn't inviting people yet, but is open to apply. Also showing the most recent cosmetic pack and highlighting a question from the community. And from this question, we learned that caravans have recently had a redesign to the systems, hopefully bringing them up to par with the rest of the game. And within this, we learned that players can now co-op caravans, which means the caravan owner can allow designated players to reserve space on that caravan for their friends to also have the their goods transported. And you can even set up an agreement for insurance so if caravans don't make it, the owner could potentially owe the other people money, which would automatically pay out to them. It definitely adds a bit more to the system and allows for players who really don't want to own a caravan to still partake in this system in a way, allowing them to be able to move large amounts of goods from node to node. From here, we get a sneak peek at the desert biome, which I already did a breakdown of on the channel and you can go check that out. But we do get a lot of aerial shots of this zone showcasing the massive scale and size of it. From the map, you can tell it's one of the larger zones and you really get that feel from this video as the Snorse makes its way through the lands. It really makes the world feel unique with this zone alone as you don't get this kind of details in MMOs these days and it looks absolutely nothing like the other zones Intrepid has shown. It really has its own unique feel. We then get a tech video not only giving us more looks at the desert biome but also an in-house design program called Landform, which Intrepid's art team has been creating to help speed up the process a bit with Unreal Engine 5. Basically, it removes some of the workflow barriers, meaning there is less of jumping between external applications to change or improve on in-game assets. It can now mostly be done in-engine, allowing for more time saving while giving the world a real high quality feeling. I'm not great with this sort of tech stuff, but it also somehow allows for Intrepid to create this high quality world, but doesn't isolate many people based on their PC specs, allowing for better performance on even the 1080 graphics cards. After this tech video, we go into the character art, which we see some updated Imperium Elf concept, really giving them that more high elf feel and almost feeling straight out of Lord of the Rings, instead of what they had in Alpha 1. These models were almost ready to show, but not quite, so hopefully we see them next month, but I'll settle for the concept art for now. But Intrepid has done a great job so far staying true to the concept art, and it will be pretty close to what you actually see in a model. The Renkai also got a big update compared to where we saw them a few months ago, giving them a more unique orc look, adding a more Asian aesthetic, which really fits a lot more with the architecture and cosmetics that have been built up around them, taking them away from the more traditional orc. The guys shown are green, but it has been said that they can also still be red like we saw before, and there's going to be an extensive amount of customization that allows you to alter this and change up how they feel. It also also wouldn't surprise me if part of the map changes that Intrepid has been talking about would be moving the orc starting zones to fit in the more Asian inspired land we know is going to be a part of the map. But that means it'd be a lot of lore shakeup as well, so I don't really know if Intrepid would actually take them out of the swamps where they were originated from. We also see the Tolnar concept for the first time. This is the very first time in like seven years that we have seen the Tolnar, which was very, very unexpected, even for Intrepid. But now we have an idea of what each of the nine races will look like. What is even more interesting though is the Tolnar are going to be very unique in the way you customize them and will allow for players to choose which influences these races have, allowing them to be more human, more mammal-like, or more reptilian-like as we can see in this image. So you really could have three different races within this one race. Now we just need 
do see more of the Underrealm and the Tolnar civilization itself. We also learned that the Dunir and Nikua dwarves are still getting some more love, along with some of the remaining races, so hopefully we see a lot more of them soon. From here, we see the Guise of the Negotiator cosmetic skin, which was one of the monthly packs and seems to fit well with the desert feel. We also get a look at the statue from the desert teaser, which Steven wouldn't share any lore around other than the symbol on her crown has some big significance. We also know the symbol on the map shown in the live stream teaser Intrepid gave us is the same one on the crown. We also see the model for the Lightfoot rabbit mount, some farm ducklings, and the shade duckling running around with his little hat on. Like I said before, Intrepid has been nailing these live streams this year, which is partially because development is finally in a place where they can show us a lot more of these cool features they've been working on for years as they get ready to put them into Alpha 2, and that Tolna reveal really set this one over the top, making it even greater. But will they be able to continue raising the bar with live streams next month? More than likely, as we still have a ton of features we have yet to see, and I will be patiently waiting for that naval content reveal. Anyways, let me know your thoughts on the live stream in the comments down below, and if you're new to Ashes and have yet to create an account, feel free to do so using my referral link in the description below, giving you access to the forums to share your feedback, along with just setting you up to purchase cosmetics, or just to be ready when you can jump in and finally play. Otherwise, be sure to click that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up, turn on the bell for notifications, and stay tuned for a lot more to come.